At this stage, I think there's some guy at Square Enix sat in a small room with a piece of paper scribbling out names. Numerous Nightmare? Nah, nah, sounds too, uh, too like an RPG. Selected Dawnspear? Mmm, some kind of stuff. I've got it. Various Day Life. And that must be how it was born. What is this game and where's it come from? Well, originally it was released back on Apple Arcade. And in fact, it was an Apple Arcade launch title from in 2019. So I should imagine there's a huge chunk of you that haven't got a clue what it's all about. What you will have spotted though is that it comes from Square Enix with its classic Times New Roman title. Why have they brought it across to Switch? Well, it features music from Go Shina as well as artwork from Naoki Yakushima. And let's be realistic, there's a chance of making some money with an audience that have never played it before. But will it become a part of your everyday various day life? Well, let's find out. The game has you creating a new colonist. You'll customise them from a huge num- no, there's three. You'll choose one of three different faces and off you go. The colony is ruled over by Elfric, who has done so for the seven years it's been established. It was set up to expand the empire, and everyone who visits is there at their own free will. They want to create a new life for them, but the contractual obligement means that they have to go on expeditions to expand the reach of this empire. You are a seventh wave colonist. I believe this is related to the years, and it's my understanding that with each new year, it's the newest additions that are obliged to go out and explore. As you'd expect from Square Enix, there are a number of side companions, from the rotund jovial warrior to the ditzy waitress, and you'll be able to build and improve your relationship with all of them. But onto the gameplay. What's it all about? How on earth does it work? And is it just a mobile game I should avoid? Essentially, Various Day Life is a life sim RPG hybrid. You can move freely about the town, but your base area is your house. In here, you can spend money to level up your companions, and you can send your character out on jobs. Now, jobs are as straightforward as being split into several classes, and if you're successful when you send your character, it will boost your experience in one of the specified areas. What's interesting here is depending on the current job that you hold, you'll have different multipliers. These will boost the amount of statistics you get if you're successful. Now I say if because your character also has a mood as well as a status bar and if these are too low, your percentage of failure gradually increases. You also don't really do anything for those jobs. They simply play out and you find whether you are successful or not. This for me is where I see the mobile roots of the game. But never fear, that's not the entirety here. That's simply a method through which you can level up your character. It's essentially grinding without having to grind. Between work, there will often be some more exposition. This in itself usually leads to more work. And between any activity, you can then go out, make some purchases from the local shop, buy better weapons, armor and gear for yourself and your companions, or stock up on health items. With its sim life roots, you can visit the local baths, and you can take out any of your companions at a cost to build your affinity. What's the point of that? Well, affinity boosts mean new special moves. These moves can then be performed when you're out on quests. That then leads us to the heart and I guess the crux of the game, the expeditions. As mentioned, every colonist has to go out on these and gradually expand the kingdom. And once selected, you choose who you want to take with you, as well as a finite number of consumable items, with certain characters being able to carry more. And it's important to note that you can change your jobs at any time. New ones are introduced at quite a steady rate, and these act as the game's classes. Different jobs will have different skills, but when you first start out with a job, you'll be essentially skillless, and through using it, you'll actually gain more. It's a classic system that works well, and so you arrive at the expedition. Now this sees your entire party walking. You know, it really reminds me of the Metopia game that we had released. They simply walk along and there's a percentage bar showing how much longer you have to go. Occasionally enemies will attack you and that's where things get a little more interesting. Now at face value it's a standard turn-based combat system but here they have the three chars. Change, chain and chance. Bear with me. Change, i.e. using a different status effect on an enemy such as lightning, water, which changes their status. You can then usually continue the chain by applying a different status. And if, let's say, they're covered in water and you have a lightning attack next, then it's likely you'll get a chance. When you're covered in water and you get struck by lightning, that's not very good. And as such, the chance attack essentially is a critical which does much higher damage, but it can also kill the enemy on sight. You might have noticed that they don't appear to have health bars. Well, as with many RPGs, one player has a move that can scan them, and then this will show up when you go for an attack. 
Sometimes on expeditions you'll have bosses to face and you might unlock new jobs simply by wandering around in a lush environment. And if it's all too slow for you, you can press a button to speed everything up. So what do I think of all of this? Well, honestly, for my personal preferences, it's just a bit too simplistic. And it's perhaps where the negative aspects of its mobile routes might not work for some console gamers. The sim life aspects are really simplified and you end up repeating the same pattern performing work that essentially doesn't require any player skill at all, choosing a different class, paying money to level up your other party members, and then heading out on expeditions which don't really amount to much more than waiting for your characters to enter a battle, and then choosing whatever the next char word is already on the screen. It's not to say that Various Daylight is a bad game, because it's not. Quite the opposite actually. If you're after a simplified, easy to pick up and play in small dose RPG, then this might be just the game for you. But simply from a personal preference, I like to have more control over every aspect of the game. Hear that, Noah? Lance wants something a bit meatier. And that's not what this is. If the loop clicks for you and you enjoy those sim life aspects, I can certainly see there's an audience for this. But if you have an Apple device and Apple Arcade, I'd suggest giving it a try before you buy. I would give gameplay 12 out of 20. The lack of control for many aspects of the game that I don't really enjoy. Controls also score 12 out of 20. Much of various Daylife's gameplay takes a place from a side perspective. Although the game is 3D rendered, this view keeps things relatively simplistic. Now, I did notice a little bit of texture streaming. This is something we see on the Unreal Engine, whereby textures load in through the next few seconds when the characters are on screen. Having said this, there are some moments of real beauty. When you're out on those expeditions, the weather changes as well as the lighting, and it can look quite striking. Character designs, although simplified, are still quite nice, and comparative to its original mobile version, the UI and overall structure has been massively improved from a visual perspective. If you were wondering, yes, there are some of the same staff that worked on Octopath Traveler, I think they bought their font with them, and it's evident as well in some of the artwork and general design, but the core developer here were Doki Doki Grooveworks. One area it does excel, though, is in the audio. <laughs> Composed by Go Shina, who originally joined Namco in 1997 and who has produced music for Tekken, Ace Combat, Demon Slayer, as well as God Eater and many others, his musical excellence does so much to elevate the game. Sound effects though aren't on quite the same level, and I wasn't convinced by the pseudo language that most players speak with. And I have had one crash as well, which is unfortunate but performance is okay, with text size being large enough, probably a reflection of its mobile roots. Visuals and performance are okay, but there's a lack of variety. They score 14 out of 20, audio scores 16 out of 20. Having owned the game originally on Apple Arcade, which obviously is a subscription service and doesn't require you to pay anything extra, I was quite surprised to see it costs £24.99 or your regional equivalent. They have done a lot in terms of overhauling the visuals, changing the UI layout and just making it fit on the Nintendo Switch, but for what the core game is, it just feels a little bit high honestly. Now yes, it's not a full price release, but it still seems crazy high. I think they could have gone for something like £9.99 and for what it offers, it would have felt worth that. As it stands though, no, I wouldn't be paying 25 quid for it. Value scores six out of 20. Various Day Life is okay. It's fun enough, but it's too expensive. And while there's a little more to it than first meets the eye, I don't think it's got the depth for most RPG fans. It gets a switch up score of 60%. Let me know in the comments, is this one you were interested in? Did you know anything about it? And is it one you'll still consider on a sale? Thanks to all of you that enjoy the channel, and as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!